Welcome. Thank you all for being here. I want to welcome you to today's webinar on implementing the CARES Act for HOPWA Competitive Renewal Grantees. Before we get going with introductions of today's presenters and then dive into the webinar, I want to go over a couple house, housekeeping items. Um, so first, you're all on mute. So if you have questions come up throughout the presentation, please go ahead and just pop those in the chat box. We'll be checking that throughout and there'll be a time at the end to answer um, questions. Due to time constraints, we may not get to everyone's question. If we don't get to your question today, please don't panic. We will be following up and answering all of those offline. Um, the second is that the slides from today will be available after uh, the webinar. They'll be emailed to all registered participants. They're also currently available in the handout section if you need to pull them up separately um, or go back and check something after we've finished with the slide and they'll be posted on the HOPWA um, page of the uh, HUD exchange as soon as possible. Um, and just a final note that this webinar is being recorded. So thank you, and with that, we're gonna go ahead and dive into our introductions. So my name is Morgan Stevenson. I know many of you from working um, on the data validation and report work, so I'm happy to be here. And with me today are my colleagues, Heather Rhoda and Steve Ellis, and staff from Office of HIV AIDS Housing. So I'm going to pass it over to Heather and Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Um, to start with some quick introductions, um, Rita, did you want to say a few words? Hi, sure. I, I would like to um, say something. Uh, this is Rita Harcrow. I am the director of the Office of HIV AIDS Housing and I just wanted to say hello uh, and thank you for your hard work um, and your commitment to uh, providing housing and services for people who are living with HIV and who are also uh, low income. And I also just want to acknowledge up front that we're all working under a tremendous amount of stress and pressure right now and, and unprecedented uh, times. Um, and I know that you all are and your communities are struggling and suffering right now and um, that um, our, our clients that we all uh, serve are also experiencing those same uh, conditions or more. And it just makes it, uh, the work all that much more important and critical. Um, and um, I again applaud your commitment um, to carrying that out even during these uh, really difficult times. Um, so um, we're happy the, that uh, Congress did appropriate funds in the CARES Act specifically for competitive renewal grantees. Um, it's a way to reach out to those communities that are not covered um, by formula funds um, and also those communities that um, uh, grantees that have special reach into communities with limited resources um, and high needs and uh, special conditions here under um, the pandemic that we're all uh, experiencing. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the organizers to uh, let you know about how to access these funds. Thanks. Thank you, Rita. Um, Morgan, do you want to go to the next slide? Yes. Here you go. So as you're all aware, on the HOP1 notice CPD, 20-05, the CARES Act Implementation Instructions and Related Flexibilities for HOPWA, issued on May 8, 2020, uh, HUD and the Office of HIV Housing began to describe and discuss what competitive grantees needed to do to access the funds that they were awarded through the CARES Act. This information included how to draft initial plans, formulating budgets, and how to create a budget submission to get access to those funds. So that's what we'll be mainly covering today. We'll also be talking about where competitive renewal grantees can go for additional information and assistance um, when drafting these plans and packets, as well as for all things HOPWA CARES Act. And as time permits, we'll answer any questions related to today's topics.
So a quick summary for what it is that um, competitive grantees need to submit to get access to their CARES Act funds. So, so of course, to get access to your funds, you're going to need to sign a grant agreement um, with your local field office. To start this process off, the Office of HIV Housing is asking that all competitive grantees submit a descriptive package to OHH via the HOPWA email address at hopwa at hud.gov. This package will include, and we'll go over all of these pieces in more detail in the next few slides, but this package should include the SF-424, the SF-424D, HUD Form 40110B, otherwise known as the HOPWA budget form, as well as a brief description and planned uses of your grant funds. We'd like to note here that if you are receiving more than one CARES allocation, particularly competitive CARES allocation, you must complete a separate descriptive package for each one of your CARES Act awards. And these plans should be put, these packages should put together and submitted to hopwa at hud.gov by June 1st, 2020. Once you submit your package, uh, HUD will review them as they come in. Um, HUD is planning on expediting these review process, these review processes to either approve or disapprove the packages. If your package is disapproved, HUD recommends that grantees make any corrections or revisions and resubmit to HOPWA at HUD.gov within 15 business days after HUD sends its notification of disapproval. And then once you resubmit, HUD is also planning on expediting, expediting that process again all with the goal of making sure that you have access to your CARES Act funds as quickly as possible. Once your plan is approved by the Office of HIV Housing, they will forward your submissions to your local field offices and give your field office the okay to proceed with executing your grant agreements. This is key because your field offices will be contacting you to execute those grant agreements. Hi, hey, everybody. Oh, hi, Steve. Are you hi. ready for it's me? It's all to yours, start? Heather. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's ready for ready for me to start. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome on this Wednesday afternoon. Again, thank you for attending. Um, my name is Heather Rhoda, and I am going to review um, exactly uh, some information that will be helpful for you as you're figuring out how to complete the descriptive package um, for your HOPA Competitive Cares Act Award. And we're going to review these um, by each um, area that, or each form, or each item that you need to submit, as Steve previously mentioned. So we're going to be taking a look at the SF424, the SF424D, um, the HUD 4110B um, HOPWA budget form, and the brief description. And just a re reminder, I know Steve just mentioned it, but there must be a separate descriptive package developed and submitted to HOPWA at HUD.gov for each CARES Act award. Next slide. So as far as completing the SF-424, grantees should submit the SF-424 um, for each separate CARES Act grant. This means do not combine more than one grant of any type on the SF-424. Next slide. Also on the SF-424, make sure that all boxes with asterisks are completed. And we're gonna look at a few special mention areas that are gonna be um, particularly uh, reviewed during the submission. First off, 
um, box one, make sure you're um, selecting application. Box two, you're gonna be selecting new. And then you're gonna move on down to um, box 8C. And uh, please note this to yourself, make sure you're entering the correct organizational DUNS number on the form. A few other items um, that we've had questions about already are included um, in box 11, the CFDA number um, for the Hoffa program is 14.241 and the CFDA title is um, Housing Opportunity for Persons with AIDS. Some other important information to make sure you have entered on the form correctly is the funding opportunity, and that's the notice CPD 20-05, the funding opportunity title, CARES Act Implementation Instructions, and related flexibilities for the HOPWA program. Again, make sure you enter the correct organizational DUNS number. So if you do have any questions about that particularly, make sure you find that out before you're um, completing the form and submitting it. Next slide. Also continuing on with the same form, in box 17, you're gonna enter in the proposed project start date and that's an estimated grant term start date. And then your end date will be three years after your estimated start date. Regarding the, regarding the estimated funding, make sure the award amount is listed correctly. In addition, please make sure that lines A and G both reflect the full amount of the CARES Act award, CARES Act grant amount. In box 20, select no, and then definitely please make sure in box 21 that is checked off. Lastly, don't forget to sign and date the form. These forms can be electronically signed and dated by an authorized official or designee but make sure you're maintaining one original um, wet signature copy locally in your own records. A scanned wet, wet signature and date is also acceptable, but no, it must be like a formal electronic signature, not simply you know, typed in Times New Roman or some other kind of font but really specifically a formal electronic signature um, through um, like a software system, like a Adobe or something similar to that. Next slide. Now we're gonna complete the SF424D. This form must be signed and dated even if you're not submitting a construction project. So that's one of the questions that we've already had. So make sure this form is signed and dated. And as I was just mentioning about um, electronically signed and dated forms, make sure you're maintaining um, also a wet signature copy locally. And the same thing applies with this form. If you're scanning a wet signature and date, that's perfectly acceptable, but make sure it's a formal electronic um, signature. Next slide. Now we're gonna be moving on to completing the HUD um, 4110B HOPL budget form. I'm gonna uh, call out a couple special uh, mention areas. Make sure that the total budget amount matches the award amount. Budget information must be um, included for both the grantee and each project sponsor as applicable. Administrative costs that you're including on this budget form must be within the eligible limits of 6% for grantees and 10% for project sponsors. Remember, this is the change um, from regular HOPO funding, so make sure that you're using the uh, correct amounts. Also, the total budget amount that would be inputted into IDIS 
make sure those amounts are calculated correctly and align across the HUD 4110B budget summary and the HUD 4110B detailed budget. Note that leveraging amounts are not required to be included on this form. Next slide. Now we're also going to talk a little bit more um, about uh, the descriptive, um, the brief description. The brief description must contain information pertaining to three points. Type and amount of each activity, process to carry out the work, and how households will access assistance. We're going to go through each type. Next slide. The first type, type and amount of each activity, this refers to the type and amount of each eligible activity the grantee anticipates undertaking with the funding. Key elements in this area include that as the grantee, you're clearly identifying the planned eligible HOPWA activities and the amount anticipated for each budget line item of that activity. The activities identified are eligible under HOPWA competitive um, uh, COVID CARES Act award funds. To re-review -re or re-familiarize yourself with eligible uh, activities, um, please take a look at uh, 24 CFR um, 574. Um, the HOPWA program rule, which lists um, the eligible activities. Next slide. Number two, your process for carrying out the work. You need to describe your process for carrying out the work and how you're going to be doing that quickly. Key elements include identifying the actions you've taken at the agency level, to quickly provide needed housing and services. The roles and responsibility of the organizations involved, the grantee and the project sponsor, for carrying out the eligible activities. Make sure those are reasonable and also clearly identified. Please also make sure you scoot, yeah, thank you. <laughs> also, in this, in this piece too, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about policies and procedures on the next slide, but also make sure as the grantee that you're acknowledging any updates or adjustments you've made to policies and procedures um, associated with COVID-19 to make sure that clients are able to quickly access housing and services. And if you haven't made those updates or adjustments, make sure you're acknowledging a clear path with an, with an estimated date for updating those policies and procedures. Next slide. And number three, how households will access assistance. How eligible households will access assistance during the period of time the grantee's main operations are closed due to um, local public health department directives. So make sure you're including in your brief description uh, a clear and feasible plan about how you as the grantee and the project sponsors will be using this supplemental, supplemental funding while also considering and adhering to public health directives to make sure you're serving clients as quickly as possible, starting from out uh, outreach, intake, client assessment, delivery of all your housing um, and services, as well as um, the outplay, outpatient, outplacement um, to self-sufficient independent housing for clients as applicable to your program. Make sure that the um, you're acknowledging in the descriptive plan that you have updated the policies and procedures, you've made adjustments, or you have a plan for making those adjustments. Specifically regarding the policies and procedures, 
while some grantee or project sponsor offices may be closed, you're still, you know, working with your clients, right? You're still conducting inspections, but make sure the policies and procedures have been updated to address how you are doing that without physically meeting with your clients, right? How you are working with them remotely um, through ongoing case management, how you're continuing to conduct annual and interim recertifications, for example, remotely, as well as policies should include adjustments related to conducting remote habitability and HQS inspections. Um, particularly for any new clients who are, you know, leasing up in their current units with tenant-based rental assistance, or for those who might be moving into um, a brand new unit for which um, a habitability or HQS inspection uh, needs to be completed. As a reminder, um, annual uh, inspections may be delayed but you can also conduct annual inspections uh, remotely if you choose to. So then your policy should also include updates and adjustments uh, about how you are doing that or how your project span, how your um, project sponsors plan to do that. Steve, and now I think it's back to you. It is, thank you. Morgan, sure. next slide. So with those specifics out of the way, we just want to go over some general points for as you're coming up with this package and particularly that plan, right? So to remember that you can use your CARES Act money for any eligible activity under HOPL regulations. There's no requirement with your CARES Act funding for you to use it on permanent supportive housing or on activities that you're currently using. The focus is, though, that all CARES Act money should go towards efforts and funding on necessary actions in order to prevent, prepare for, and respond to COVID-19. So if you do plan on doing anything a little different from your current uh, operating, um, not only, as Heather mentioned, do you need to make sure that that's changed in your policies and procedures, but you also want to make sure that you're using the, co the most correct information. So not only will you want to look at HOPA regulations, but you'll want to refer to any specific memorandums or OHH guidance on flexibilities to HOPA regulations, to changes to HOPA activities that occurred because of the CARES Act. And all this will make sure that your plan that you're submitting is as accurate and as tidy as possible. As a special note for you competitive grantees out there that um, fall within a formula grantee EMSA, uh, OHH does ask that you coordinate with your formula grantees just to make sure there's no overlap or duplication of benefits or assistance or to make sure that um, clients aren't accessing two different programs for the same activity. Next slide. So some general expectations for competitive grantees that if you are a grantee that has project sponsors, um, similar to other HOPOA grantees, OHH is asking that you um, execute new or amend your contracts with those project sponsors within 14 calendar days within the execution of your competitive grant. And as a note, project sponsor selections are not subject to the procurement um, requirements under 2 CFR 200. Um, as a, another note, HOPWA's CARES, HOPWA CARES Act funding will be reported separately from the rest of your regular HOPWA competitive funding. It's a different funding bucket, so it's going to be reported separately. Um, there should be additional guidance coming out as soon as it can be to help instruct you in that. Um, but at least for the time being, just keep reminding yourself that it is a different award, so therefore reporting will be different. It will not be sort of clumped in with the rest of your APR reporting. And otherwise, um, outside of your CARES Act funding, you should continue to implement your current competitive grants as currently approved, right? 
any changes that you wish to make to your current awards, please go through your normal process to make those changes. There's nothing within this process or in the presentation that we have that's changing that. Next slide. So as we sort of wrap it all together and um, bring it home, just a quick reminder, right, that by June 1st, you should submit a complete descriptive packages for each one of your awards. And each one of these packages should include an SF-424, an SF-424D, the HUD-40110B HOPWA budget form, and that brief description about your uses and how clients are going to access the activities. To make sure to expedite the review and to make sure that you can get a grant agreement quickly, don't forget to enter the correct DUNS number on the SF-424. Your hint should be that the DUNS number should match your SAM registration. Also, don't forget to sign and date the SF-424, whether that's a wet signature or a formal electronic signature through some sort of um, database or electronic system. And the same for the SF-424D. Make sure it is signed and dated before you submit. Next slide. So with that, out of the way, we just want to remind you that if you do have any questions about the HOPWA program, any notices, any waivers, these plans, or implementing COVID-19 activities, um, please submit your questions to the HOPWA AAQ. Um, I'm sure most of you have either submitted or do know how, but if you need to submit an AAQ, you would go to the HUD Exchange, go to the AAQ portal, and in step two, please make sure to select the HOPWA Housing Opportunities with Persons with AIDS. That way it will come right to the HOPWA AAQ desk. Next question, or next slide. So grantees who are in need of individualized assistance um, in responding to COVID-19 or the regular HOPWA program as a whole should submit a TA request. So there are those of us out there, such as the Cloudburst Group, and there's two other great firms out there that do um, technical assistance. So we work with you, the grantees, to help implement your programs, help with any policies, you know, help make sure that you are doing the best that you can with your HOPWA dollars. So if this is something that you feel that you need assistance with, you can also request technical assistance today through the HUD Exchange. So in the same place that you would go for the AAQ, instead go to the request program assistance and then um, this hyperlink that's also on this page will help you get there and then submit a TA request for HOPWA housing opportunities for persons with AIDS and make sure to write uh, as the topic health preparedness and response. That way it will get flagged in the system as something that's directly related to COVID-19 um, in your program design. Next slide. As a final reminder, as many of you are aware, there's been um, several presentations and webinars that have occurred, and there will surely be more in the future. So guidance related to funding and impl implementation of COVID-19 activities and CARES Act funding is evolving um, as new information and requirements emerge. So please make sure to stay tuned um, through these updates to the HOPWA listserv and the HOPWA COVID-19 guidance on the HUD exchange. So uh, if you do not currently receive uh, emails from the HOPWA listserv, please make sure to sign up this afternoon to get that information as soon as it's uh, available. All right. Back to you, Heather. Well we, well, we do have a couple of questions. Um, first, let's take a look here. Um, we have one. Uh, do grantees with project sponsors have to contract with any, with any or all of its project sponsors with CARE, CARES Act funds? 
Hey, Heather, this is Rita. I'll um, try to answer that one. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so you do not have to uh, contract with the same uh, project sponsors in the same manner that you have for your regular award. Um, you should uh, think about this as you're developing your budget and your plan. Who can carry out the work? Is that your organization um, or some other organization? But what we are um, asking is that you, if, if you're going to um, have an agreement with a project sponsor, that you carry that agreement out quickly, that you execute that quickly. Um, so it, in general, no, what, what we'd like is for you to tell us uh, it, in your um, descriptive package how you will be carrying out the work. Um, and again, it does not have to be exactly the same as you uh, do your other work of your regular grant. Thank you. We also have um, a question, where can um, grantees find the SF-424, the SF-424D, and the HUD 4110B um, um, budget, HOPA budget form? This is Lisa um, with the Office of HIV AIDS Housing. Um, I can take that question. So these forms are actually all available online if you um, just type in the, the title of the form. Um, SF means standard form. So that's a form that's used government wide and is available on uh, grants.gov. Um, and then the HUD 4110B can be found in a number of places. Um, we have it posted on the HUD exchange. We also have it on HUD.gov. Um, if you just, once again, if you type in that form number um, in a Google search, it will come up. If you are having any trouble finding any of these forms, please feel free to email hopwa at HUD.gov and we'll make sure to send you a copy of those forms. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing um, any additional questions in the chat box. There's a few in a question box. Um, there's one question about if grantees only need to discuss policies related to their CARES Act funding in their plan or if they need to discuss policies as a whole. Do you want to take that OHH? Yeah, um, I'm not sure I understand exactly what the question is, but uh, what we want to see in your descriptive package uh, relates to CARES Act and carrying out the work of the CARES Act. Um, if you have policies in place for the activities that you intend to carry out, address that uh, to show that you know you have a, a good plan in place to carry out those activities. If it's some new activity that you've never done before, um, uh, you, you would want to address, you know, how uh, you're developing policies to be able to carry that out. What are your policies and procedures that you're going to use in order to accomplish that activity? Um, so what we really want to know for this descriptive package is how are you carrying out the CARES Act work specifically? Great, thank you. Are there any other questions? You people have asked um, if there is a page limit to the plan um, when they submit. That's a great question. This is Lisa again. I can take <laughs> that question. Um, there is no page limit, um, but we do ask that um, you do make sure that you answer all three of the points that are being asked and make sure to uh, look back at the slides in this webinar to make sure um, to understand exactly what those points are. Um, I don't think anybody wants to write um, a lot and we uh, will certainly have plenty of these descriptive packages to read. 
Um, so uh, certainly use your discretion if you need uh, more space to uh, specifically answer the questions needed for that de brief description. Um, certainly use the space, um, but the word brief is before description uh, for a reason. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Um, there's a few questions that are all sort of related, and I think we can we can answer them. As a reminder, right, you need to submit a complete form for each package. So if you have more than one um, CARES Act fund uh, competitive award, you do need to submit a different 424, a different 424B, and a different 40110B, right? So there should be complete packages for each one of your awards. There's a question here asking if once they submit their plan and it's approved, does that mean that a grantee can go ahead and carry out their activities that they outlined in their plan? So uh, this is Lisa again. Um, I can take that. Um, so the purpose of the descriptive package um, that's being submitted is to um, make sure all of the plan is in place so that you can move forward with executing your grant agreement. Um, and basically what happens when the grant agreement is executed is, is that you will gain access to your funding. Um, we do understand that there are a lot of communities who need funding um, to respond to the impacts that COVID-19 are having on their communities. Um, or even reimburse themselves for efforts that were made to immediately respond to the impacts of COVID-19. Um, but uh, we are working as fast as we can to get funds out to communities. And one of the ways that we're, um, we're doing that is to provide oppor um, an opportunity for grantees um, to submit that package and um, access the funding as quickly as possible. And we're um, and one thing that I don't think we got into um, here is that if we do see unsubstantial deficiencies on uh, in descriptive packages that are submitted, we will provide um, follow-up for grantees to correct those deficiencies um, while we also move forward with signing the grant agreement. Um, and I am not sure if I actually answered the question at hand at this point as I'm talking. I, th I think you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, as there's a few questions, as a reminder, if you need to download the slides, it should be available under the handouts tab. We will also email the presentation out to everyone as soon as we are finished. Um, another question is um, a grantee is thinking about carrying out a HOPWA activity that they've not done before. Is this allowed? Uh, hey, Steve, it's Rita. Um, so we, we've seen this question. I've seen it come in a couple of different ways, uh, you know, um, about um, can we do something new with this money? And also, can we serve different people or does it have to be the same people that we're already assisting? And the answer is, this is new money. It allows you to do uh, new activities in response to COVID-19. And you don't have to just serve the households that you're already serving. Um, the intent is to serve the people who uh, need the assistance. Um, so that might be uh, households that you have not worked with before. Um, and, uh, We've mentioned this a couple of times in the in the presentation, but just to be clear, it, in your regular award, which you may have had, you know, 15 or 20 years and run the same way that whole time, you have certain budget line items that you um, are used to and, and um, have been operating. This is separate money from that. This is a one-time separate award intended uh, to just help you respond to COVID-19 in your community. So you do not have to do the same thing that you've been doing. Um, in, in all likelihood, you will have something different. Um, just as a reminder though, if something new and different, just make sure that you're looking at those regulations, uh, look at the guidance for those activities that, that you're not familiar with, um, and make sure that you develop a, a policy and a procedure. How are you gonna carry it out? What's the step-by-step -step to make sure that you're uh, carrying that out right? And, 
you know, that might sound daunting, but you do have a lifeline, as been, has been mentioned, uh, technical assistance is available. You can go to the AAQ portal, which is ask a question portal, and just put that question right in there and, and ask questions about uh, policy or, or procedure uh, or reg, whatever you need help with on any activity. And um, you can also go ahead and ask for technical assistance, which might be, you know, a phone call or some kind of direct support to help you in sorting some of that out. Um, when you're thinking about activities, I would also uh, remind you, we've been, we've been suggesting that you don't uh, look at those long-term or ongoing costs. So things like construction, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't really make sense uh, for construction or even uh, alleviating your TIBRA wait list if that's uh, something that you have, that, that you now have this new money, uh, because this is not ongoing money. This is a one-time shot of money to help people in the community right now and with COVID-19 recovery as people are returning to work, um, they might need employment assistance, housing, whatever you identify as the COVID-19 need, not just your normal uh, usual activities that you're um, carrying out. Um, so that might have been more information than you wanted, but uh, in, in short, uh, yes, it's allowed. That was perfect, Rita. Thank you. Um, let's see some of these questions. As a reminder, we will, um, if we don't get to a question today during the webinar, we will address them offline because there's a few specific questions around grant numbers. Um, so if I don't ask your question out loud, don't worry to those who have asked, we will definitely get to you. Um, there is a follow-up question about project sponsors. Um, so can a grantee select a new project sponsor to help carry out any HOPWA CARES Act funds and activities? Um, so this is this is Rita, and the answer to that would also be yes. Um, if you've um, um, you know vetted that sponsor and know that that is a sponsor that can carry out the work, and you put that into your descriptive package for us and explain you know how they would be carrying out the work, um, that is something that you could absolutely consider. Great. Um, and I think to address a few other questions, as a reminder that the um, any HOPWA waivers that have been put out through the memorandums or things that are specific to HOPWA through the CARES Act are specific to HOPWA only. Any of the other waivers that you've seen for other CPD programs, unless it explicitly includes HOPWA, do not apply um, to this money. So please make sure to take note of that as you are drafting um, your plan and completing your package. I'm not seeing, Steve, this is Heather, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but I, I double check that. Um, I'm not seeing, I apologize, if someone's asked a question and I am skipping over it um, as I scroll through these, um, I don't. Here's a question that I think is relevant. How how would the competitive grantees know or get their new grant number agreement for the CARES Act funding? Uh, I can take this question. Um, this is Lisa. So when the field office reaches out to you um, to execute the grant agreement, there will be there will be information provided from the field office um, on the new grant number. Um, there's also award letters that should have gone out um, with the amount of the grant on them. And for Lisa, for those who had multiple CARES Act grants, how would they identify um, the difference between those grants when they're submitting their packages? Um, grantees can um, refer to the amount of funding. Um, I think it's that will be the easiest way um, if you do not have the grant number available. 
um, you're going to have to submit a budget form and account for how you're going to spend that funding. Um, so making sure that your uh, the packages are specifically addressing the amount of funding that is available under that specific award. Thank you. And just as a um, reminder, so the letters did go out, but the um, the allocations are also posted um, on um, HUD.gov. Thank you, Rita. Um, so there's there's a few questions for those who are getting competitive and formula HOPWA funds. So just to clarify through some of these questions, those who are getting competitive and formula funds must go through two separate processes, correct? The competitive process we just went over and then that which formula grantees need to do to access their funds, correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, correct. yeah. So each one of these uh, allocations is a separate allocation. So your formula grant has a uh, CARES Act grant associated with with that. Your each of your uh, competitive renewals has a CARES Act uh, allocation associated with that. That's why you might have two, um, because it's based on your current HOPWA award. So. Uh, those are just different processes, inherently formula and competitive uh, processes. So for those of you who get both, we apologize, but you do will need to, you will need to do two different processes for those. But on the plus side, uh, you if you do receive both, you're aware of both uh, competitive and formula, so you can also coordinate between those and maximize those resources and make sure you're getting everything covered, um, which is ideal. Absolutely. Right, and I think, I think that's a very positive way to end this. I think most of the other questions are very specific, um, so we can handle them offline. But we will remind people, right, um, if you do have additional questions about this topic that we've reviewed today, please feel free to submit a HOPWA AAQ um, if you didn't get a chance to type it uh, in the box. And as a final reminder, we will definitely email all of these uh, this presentation out. I think that's it for the questions that have been submitted. Morgan, would you like to finish it up? Hey, yeah, if that's everything, then I just wanted to, yeah, thank everyone for joining. Um, and as Steve just said, again, the reminder that your questions will be answered offline, those that were not answered just now. Um, slides will be emailed as soon as we finish this presentation, and the webinar will be available on the HUD Exchange um, as quickly as we can get it there. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for your time today and your work with your communities. Um, to get these funds and resources out to them. Thank you and have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, goodbye. Bye all.